back to Septic Age of the Sky, and today we're going to be handling power. Yes, behind us you'll see what's going to be the start of our power infrastructure, i.e. not the passive stuff downstairs, the uh, the lava generating and the, the water wheel generating. So why don't we get started with that? So just a brief overview uh, well, of our prior stuff. I had here a boiler that was producing a little bit of steam just to get some plastic running, but we need a lot more steam than that and I'm not supplying enough diesel for this thing to actually make any sense. So that's going to go away shortly. We're generating a little bit of power with water wheels, and I did get rid of the magma creatures just by filling in all available space around here, and these work fine. They're a passive source of power. However, we want a lot more power than that because one of the things next we're up is going to be the arc, not the arc reactor, but the arc furnace, and that is, uh, well, first of all, we need the electrodes, but um, then we also need the arc furnace itself. I need the book to be able to see how much stuff that is. It's going to be a lot of stuff. Um, where's my book? There it is. So arc furnace uh, is not in here. It's going to be in heavy machinery, I imagine. Arc furnace. Yes, so um, lots and lots and lots and lots of steel. <laughs> okay, but the advantage is once you've got it running, it actually will produce steel much, much faster than either of these things obviously combined. Um, and I've got a little bit of steel running, but uh, I'm going to need more. Today's episode is going to be heavy on iron and steel production. If you don't have an island nearby that you've gone and used your pick, uh, I'd suggest going and doing at least one island for worth of iron, if not two, uh, because it does need quite a bit. So what did I build out here on this platform at the start of the episode? This is a solar tower. In fact, it's a solar tower with four reflectors around the outside. So the central 3x3 three three block is one thing, and it is in your engineer's manual. Um, because it's more of immersive engineering and not covered on camera, but here it is. Um, where is it? It's in immersive tech. So solar tower. There it is. There's obviously a list of stuff you can do. Uh, basically, this takes the power of the sun, as you might imagine, and it doesn't produce power. It produces steam. So you're going to need to use that steam to generate power. However, around the outside, I've got four solar reflectors. These don't need any gaps between it and the main 3x3, three three, so you don't need to spread them out. You can be right next door. The only thing you need to make sure of is that that block right there can see the sky. All right, so if we have a look on the inside now, there's three, uh, presumably because, you know, not all four can be lit by the sun at the same time, uh, unless I've got something like a, a light source on here that's blocking things. I don't think I have, I think it's on top. Yeah, they all look fine. So uh, yes, we've got um, four solar reflectors there. Then they can be shared by multiple um, solar towers. So if you wanted to, I could build another solar tower right here in this 3x3 three three, and that would work for both. And then you could of course build another one here and this that would work for both. And then you could basically save um, lots of uh, building by sharing one solar reflector between two towers and then build a 2x2 two two block of them uh, to generate lots and lots of steam. I'm not sure how much steam we're going to need, so I've built one to get started and I put it well down with a uh, fluid extraction cable from Cyclic. Uh, very, very nice. Once you actually get them set up and there's not when, they, when you're not dealing with multiple fluids, it's all very easy. And I built a couple more because we're going to be using that to basically get the steam out. Now, in my case, I, uh, I'm going to probably put my steam sort of power generator on this side of the path. So we've got probably a line of solar towers, perhaps. And then on this side, we've got uh, potentially a multi-block structure. Well, not potentially, actually a multi-block structure. So I just want to make sure this is sort of spaced right. So I've got like three from the path there. So if I put, um, that's the path, one, two, three, and then four. So whatever I do, will start here. And that's going to be about a controller, I think. So let's talk about advanced generators. The reason I rushed to age four is that you can actually then use advanced generators and if you haven't used them before, they're really nice. They're a flexible multi-block. You can put them wherever you like, which makes it much, much easier than the modularium stuff. Uh, so, you know, you can just put them down. So, for example, we're just going to put down this steam turbine controller. Okay, no steam, 100,000 RF, and then RPM consuming. Now, you're going to want to maybe turn this on and off in the future. So, I built a redstone control module for that. And uh, we pull that down. You'll see it multi-block uh, textured. And then a fluid intake valve. Um, that is going to be, well, where do I want to put oh, I think I want to rearrange this. I'm going to put the controller on the other side. <laughs> controller can go there. And then the fluid intake can go here. All right. And then on top, I'm going to build a high density power capacitor, put that in the middle. That can store up to 25 million RF. None of these are using any exotic materials, they're all just 
basically iron, redstone, lapis, nether quartz, steel, uh, in fact, steel for the, the solar tower, and pretty much nothing else. It's just all that kind of stuff making these redstone iron wirings. Oh, and gold. Um, I'm, out of, I'm out of iron, <laughs> so I need to go and uh, get more of that. But I did finally make five gold-plated turbines, so we're going to put that in place there. So one, two, three, four, five. And that makes a nice three by three block, but you can extend this quite a bit. So if you have a look at the controller, it says you can install up to 50 turbines. Okay, so each one will generate 150 RF. Let me just show you the turbines. There are three types. You can use gold, iron, and manulin. Now, iron is the lowest, as you might imagine. Um, and that is, ooh, I've actually, I actually made a Ford energy emitter. I may have to make one. I have not. <laughs> okay, so I may have to make one to get the power out, but that's fine. I'll put that below or something. Um, where was I? Uh, yes, uh, so turbines. So you have uh, iron, iron turbine rotor, etc. To make that, it's just lots and lots of iron. Okay, lots and lots of iron. Uh, gold is exactly the same, but you can use an upgrade kit on that. So for an upgrade kit, you just have to make a rotor and then an upgrade kit, which is just more iron and sticks. And that's perfectly easy to do. And then the third one, which we don't have a lot of yet, we can make theoretically a few, but uh, not, not enough to really to make, that, to make that worthwhile. But you can make a manual in turbine blade. Uh, the difference is uh, iron is like 100 RF per tick. Gold is like 150. Yeah, and manulin is 500. <laughs> Okay, so you may want to go and switch to the nether now that we have creative flight, and that was one of the, the main reasons I wanted creative flight, just to not have to glide around everywhere. Because you can see the, the Ardite and the, the cobalt in the side of um in the side of islands potentially, and then just not need to actually go and deal with the islands. And also you can light up the islands by holding down your by using your um your blood magic stuff without the worry of falling off your glider. So <laughs> That's very useful for the beneath and very useful for the nether in both cases. So yes, uh, you can put whatever turbines you want in. However, I do need to for get a forge energy emitter, I think, to pull this, this out. So let me just see what that actually involves and we'll just craft that final one. And um, hopefully it'll just go, just go below so I don't have to need to worry about, um, well, if it'll multi-block straight down without like a three by three kind of uh, profile. Uh, what was I? Yes, so forge energy emitter, there we go. It is stuff I don't have. Uh, a couple of pistons, some more iron. <laughs> oh, the iron, the iron production today is just going to be oh mad. Uh, did I actually get any more out of here? I've got like four iron left here. Uh, can I scrape enough together? Probably not. Ah, oh, 25, uh, 45 iron and some gold nuggets. That there it is. There it is. We've got enough to scrape together, and that means I just need a couple of pistons as well. So let's just grab a couple of you. Uh, I'm going to need some sidings, so I just need a little bit of wood. Um, uh, wood. I'll oh, just grab some from here. There you go. Get some planks going. I do like the um, I do like the saw. It is so nice. And then we can just get a few sidings. There you go. Okay. All right, so sidings done. We'll just craft those together into everything. So we just want the two pistons do and we want the power io module and then we just want everything else together so we want two more iron frames and that should be that done it is okay and i still have 39 iron that only took six extra but i really am punishingly low on iron right now so yeah let's just get rid of shall we say you and you and let's see whether you multi-block. You do, good. So you should be accessible from below and you see the rest of my machine hall sort of <laughs> building up down there. I should be able to grab that, but it, it'll probably be HV rather than low voltage. So HV stuff is probably gonna require steel to make or uh, aluminium. Uh, aluminium's not too bad, but it's a most of engineering aluminium. Uh, hopefully that can be cast out. Yeah, that's fine. That's exactly what we want and terracotta as before, and relays are exactly the same except insulating glass, which we've made before, it's just some iron, uh, iron grit, <laughs> and green type powder, which is coming from cactus, so yeah, we, we can make those kind of things. Uh, transformers, if we want to change that down into low voltage or medium voltage, 
and HV capacitors if we want a buffer. Now we already should have a buffer in this multi-block structure, but just in case, you know, we have something else. Now, if I hook this up now, now it should start consuming steam, I think. Uh, so I just want to get a, uh, do I have uh, enough for a lever on? Can we actually make a lever with treated sticks? We cannot. Uh, well, luckily I have some regular sticks on me. Always annoys me that it's the wrong way around. Steam, <laughs> stone should be on top, wood should be underneath. But yeah, that's that's just that. Let me just uh, put this on, redstone control module. There we go. And let's just switch that on. So then we just need to basically hook up the, um, the steam. And that handily comes out of this port around the side here that and then we should be able to get the uh the pipe work all connected because hey we have creative flight it is so nice oh love creative flight once we have it and let's just head this way and i'm gonna need more <laughs> i'm clearly gonna need more pipe pipe is just bricks and uh gold nuggets so again that is something i already have that's that connected up. Let's just see whether this is now showing some steam. It is showing steam and it is actually uh, basically, <laughs> if I turn that back off again, hopefully it's, it'll start building up. Has it used all the steam that, that quickly? It has used all the steam that quickly. Wow. Okay, but it has actually produced um, 750, uh, 750 RF per tick, yes. So we can build this up to actually produce just by adding more and more and more turbines or upgrading the ones we have. So you can see that took a lot of steam just to generate a little bit of power. So I'm probably going to need to add more solar towers to get more power. But we have something that I can just scale up quite easily now. And again, this will scale up on this side, probably into quite a long block. Or I could do go five by five if I wanted to. Um, yeah, maybe once I have enough turbines, we can always rebuild it. It's no big deal. Uh, I just want to, don't want to change where the controller is because that's pro and the potentially the, the capacitor is. I don't want to actually lose the power I've generated. Anyway, that's enough for that. I'm going to go over doing more building in the background. And uh, yeah, I think we should be done here. We've got everything nicely set up for power. We've now just put some power connectors on the underside here. Uh, I may need a power adapter from Buildcraft just to change across to, so that it can be used. I'm not sure. We'll, st we'll try attaching to it and see what we get. But that's the basis of our steam powered uh, power generation. Just one quick thing here, if you want to control this properly with redstone, if you right click on the control module, you can set what behavior you want. So you can say if there's an on signal, i.e. the levers on, then use the steam. And you can change that to be energy generation and all kinds of other stuff. But yeah, use steam. So from here, you can see steam is now building up. And it's capable of 750 RF per tick, <laughs> but it's certainly not going to do that uh, continuously. So you can see right now it's building up steam, but it's not building up uh, RF. It's got 30K RF and that will be used up very, very quickly by an arc furnace. So this will produce stuff in the background and hold it ready for arc furnacing um, steel. However, if I turn it on, you'll see, well, there goes all the steam. <laughs> OK, so that's how fast it can produce or rather it can consume steam from a, uh, a single solar tower. So, yes. Uh, more turbines perhaps needed and uh, we obviously have more solar towers. However, this is going to be basically a big battery. We can just leave running if we wanted to. And in the background, it will just continually build up power for us. And um, then we can use it all at once in one big batch um, and perhaps have this on a separate power network to um, to our passive generation down there, which is doing a fine job doing just a few basic machines. However, now I can actually take down this boiler because we don't need a boiler to produce steam anymore because well we have a free steam from a solar tower which is what i kind of prefer i kind of uh, kind of like it so that if i make a mistake and let's face it i make mistakes you make mistakes everyone makes mistakes uh then i don't end up in a power starvation situation where i can't start things back up because um you know i don't have power to start things back up and you end up in a, in a feedback loop you don't want to be in <laughs> So that is, uh, that is that is a good thing to, to basically get yourself out of. So with the solar tower, it's going to produce that as long as it has water and the water is essentially free. So the whole thing is free and uh, everything's good. Right, so onward to perhaps doing uh, maybe the arc furnace build next. Depends how much more steel and iron I can find and convert over. 
um, then that will just make steel essentially effortless as long as you have <laughs> as long as you have enough power to actually uh, power the arc furnace. So I did a quick test using LV connection. That's nowhere near enough really for an arc furnace, but it does actually connect just fine straight to the uh, forge energy emitter. So you can see up here, this thing is building up power and it's outputting down here, down here, down here. And there are three connectors on the back side of this thing. Yes, it can take three connectors. They can go up there and then they will all be connected perhaps to the relay or maybe through the connector. I can't remember whether that's actually, no, you can't go through the connector because that's only one to one connection so you have to have three independent things to a relay fair enough however we need to make electrodes and electrodes are not terribly hard to make i don't think uh, but you do need some more machines we need hop graphite dust to make the engineer's blueprint to make hop graphite dust is straightforward uh, but it does need us to go and make a couple of other things this is a crusher from immersive engineering this is the industrial squeezer from immersive engineering all connected to low voltage perfectly fine as it is and in here, all we need to do is throw cold coke. So, uh, are you finished making me a cold coke? Yeah, there is. So there's a block of cold coke. And uh, can I just convert it straight back down? I can, that's good. And you're gonna want to basically convert eight of this across. And I think I've already got one spare. I do, so seven should do for just fine. And for the squeezer, well, so the crusher, you just need to throw it in the top. Off that will go it'll make us up to eight coke dust the eight coke dust then gets thrown into the squeezer and that will make us the uh, hop graphite dust so here once we have that we then can go upstairs and put this into our workbench along with everything else there we go uh, so if i change those over it then has graphite electrode now to make graphite electrodes it needs four hop graphite ingots so you can see we do <laughs> We do need more of the hot graphite stuff. So hot graphite ingots is any smelting from the hot graphite dust. So that's perfectly fine. So I'm going to need uh, four sets of hot graphite dust, basically for hot graphite ingots, which means what? 32 cold coke. Yeah. Um, I've got a little bit being produced, but um, that's going to take a little bit while to do. So I'll wait for that off camera. I've obviously got one batch already here. And just to show it to you, we just go and pop it into the, uh, the side port here on that, and it will then go into the center. And then the squeezer will start squeezing and output here our hop graphite dust. Cool. So that's all working. Uh, then the only thing we really need after that point is uh, one the uh, HV connectors and everything else to make sure that's all connected over there. And then I think we're okay. We just need, um, we may even need like three electrodes, uh, which which may take, uh, which may take uh, quite a bit more cold coke. Can we do we have any improved method of making cold coke yet? Yeah. Because uh, that would be really nice if we did. Uh, coke oven is the only way. Yeah, coke oven is the only way. Okay, well, I guess I'll have to wait again. And I'm going to try a quick test. I want to make a graphite electrode, and there it goes. I want to see if one works. It'd be nice if it did. Um, I get the suspicion that it may not do, but hey, that's uh, that's fine. Now let's just give it a go anyway, and throw some cold coke into the crusher. Uh, so from here on outwards, if everything works, we can get rid of this reinforced blast brick. Now, the arc furnace itself does take this exact number of reinforced blast bricks. However, I never, I never deconstruct this until the next thing's actually ready and working. So yeah, you could even make a second arc furnace eventually with these extra bricks. But for the moment, these are gonna work just fine. Uh, however, once that arc furnace is up and working, we can just take this entire thing out, but we will need one or more reinforced Coke bricks producing us more cold Coke, and they can be fed directly into the top of a crusher so I could rebuild that whole thing above here if I actually wanted to. Not sure if I'm gonna do that. I can obviously just manually port stuff across for now just to get things running that way. So are you done with coke dust? So yes, uh, let me just make sure it's uh, one of each. Uh, you can't do it in blocks, unfortunately, unlike the reinforced blast furnace over there. You have to do things in ingots, but uh, there we go. And you can see I now have HV connectors and relays connected to this thing. So there's about a million RF in storage at the moment. Let's just double check how much we've got. Let's see how long that lasts, so a million RF. And uh, let's see how quickly it processes or rather uses this up. So 
In goes my graphite electrode. Will you actually work with this? Um, you are not doing anything. That's annoying. So you can distribute the inputs because it's going to be able to do more than one thing at once. But you're going to actually need more, more electrodes, aren't you? Uh, or rather, I'm also going to need a lever as well to make sure this is only turned on when I want it to rather than anything else. But yep, looks like I'm waiting for more coal coke. And a little bit of waiting later, I now have some coke dust, some iron ingots and three graphite electrodes. So if I dump them in and I distribute the inputs, then I should be able to flip this the other way. And you definitely have taken integrity, which is good. That's exactly what's happening when we should have this thing actually producing stuff for us. Yeah, there it goes. So this is obviously much, much faster than our reinforced blast oven, and it will do all of these all at the same time with one output. So that's very, very handy to have. So yes, this thing works. And of course, we can just dump a whole load of stuff in. Now, I tried moving the just in case just to just just to check, really, I tried moving uh, this oven, this coke brick oven um, out there and connected to the HV. Made no difference whatsoever in terms of the speed, so I moved it back in here to the free power rather than the uh, the stuff that I want to just keep the power for. Um, oh, in fact, it used up probably about half a million RF just doing that little bit of steel. <laughs> so, yeah, that's going to need to build up and end. I will just use it all at once when I need to do a whole batch of steel. So working well, but I do need to make more steel tower, uh, solar towers, which, of course, make, takes more steel and you get the idea. You've seen it all now, so um, I shouldn't need to cover that more on, on camera. You'll probably see just this array of solar towers growing. Now, of course, you can uh, just generate steam via the boiler method, which we had before. We had the boiler. And that comes from diesel, which, of course, we're going to get output from these anyway. So you could use that. The other thing is you could use the whole biodiesel approach, which is uh, you get a couple of diesel generators from immersive engineering and then you feed them with melon and yeah, hemp seeds, etc. And that, that works very well as, as well. It's just very active, whereas solar towers, you don't need to manage them. You don't need to manage any inputs. You don't need to have any cloches going. Uh, they work, but um, I may need more of them. Yes, but that's that part of the episode done. And I think for today, I'm going to leave it as a short episode because, um, yes, we've got other things to do, but it would just end up being a very long episode otherwise. And I've had a few 40 minute episodes in the series so far, so I had to balance them out a little bit. But uh, yeah, so over time, I'm just going to make some more turbines and, of course, make some more solar towers from there. So if you enjoyed the episode, do give it a like down below. But if you've got any questions or if you want to improve the setup, feel free. What you could do, for example, if you need a lot more uh, graphite stuff is just have more of these ovens and you don't necessarily need the preheaters either just make the simple ovens and just make 27 blocks of them and put one down and another 27 blocks and put them down and just have arrays of them and that all you need to do is feed in the coal co uh, the, the coal into the top uh, pull out the coal coke at the bottom and also pull out the um, the, uh, the, the obviously the mm, creosote so yeah that's that's perfectly well and you don't actually need any kind of connector here these do output into these tanks just fine so yeah this should be fine you see it's empty there so yeah all's good all right so we'll see you next episode i think probably maybe some blood magic next episode but now that we've got some active power running and the easy ability to make steel assuming that we've got enough of our battery up there and uh, we'll go from there really hope you enjoyed see you next time